When did you first like get the inspiration to do like fried chicken this way? Well, you know, it's funny. I was watching Road to Perdition. <laughs> Tom Hanks goes to a like a diner with his son, and the waitress says, you know, our special tonight is honey dipped fried chicken. And I heard that and I was like, oh that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Chef David in Manhattan Beach. Yep. When you open up, why did you want to do a brunch? Brunches in this neighborhood are really, really popular. You can have a drink or two and then get the rest of your day going at the beach. So what are you going to make for us today? Fried chicken is one of those things that just hits it right on the head. It's like you can have it for lunch. Sometimes people have it for dinner. It's got a perfect place, I think, on the brunch menu. You know, when we originally opened, we used a lot of thigh meat, but our guests are consistently telling us that they like breast meat. We're gonna keep that wing bone in and just slice it a little bit on the bias so you can get a nice thick piece with the wing bone okay. and then two other kind of tranched pieces so you get three nice pieces per order. The next thing that we have to do is we have to make the brine. So we just have you know a couple cloves of garlic here. You wanna just smash them, you don't need to mince them up or anything. And then I've got our bay leaf, our thyme, our rosemary. I'm gonna pop that in there. Mm -hmm. And now we've got black peppercorns. I'm gonna just do these whole because later on I'm gonna have to strain this all out. So we've got our sugar in there, we've got our lemon zest and our salt in there. I'm gonna take that down to just a low simmer. Let that go for about 20 minutes. Okay. And then we're gonna cool that down. That's when we give the chicken a bath. Yeah, so all, literally, I mean, it's not rocket science. Yeah, right? it's, it's not rocket science, it's biochemistry. Right, exactly, right, <laughs> exactly. So let it sit for 12 hours. So 12 hours later, we're gonna take that chicken out. And the idea then is to dry the chicken out and help form a little bit of a pellicle. When you see it look kind of dried, you're like, that's not what it's supposed to look like. Right, because the pictures you see yeah. everywhere of this juicy, wet chicken, right, well, no, that dryness is gonna help get your skin crispy, yeah. you know? And then we'll just have it resting inside the cooler to get that pellicle on it. Cool. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get our dredge ready. If you just use flour, it's gonna taste just like crunchy flour. Right, and so we decided to use brown black pepper. We have salt, and the last thing we have is a little bit of baking powder to add just a little bit of puff to, bit it. Of puff to it. And we like to use paprika. Paprika gives like a little bit of peppery flavor, a little bit of sweetness, and it also gives a really great orange brownish color. Yeah. And the more we stir it, that flour is going to break down more, and that paprika is going to come out, and it's going to get more orange and okay. more orange and more orange. Next thing we have to do: use a little buttermilk to create a coating on the chicken. So. And it gives a little sour component too. Exactly, exactly. You can let it sit for three hours, four hours if you want. You don't need to though. So the next thing to do, you're just gonna pop it in the dredge. Mm -hmm. But you wanna make sure that every moist section of that chicken is getting dredged. So you can see I still need to get that area right there. So we'll put it in again. You can see it looks kind of crinkly, right? It yeah. should be wrinkly, right? That's how you get all those nice nooks and crannies in your fried chicken. We've let the chicken sit for about an hour, and you can see that it turns kind of tacky. Yeah. We're gonna take that and we're gonna do our double dredge on it. And you're going for those wrinkles, the nooks and crannies that we talk about. So we've got three portions now, ready to fry off. Let's do it. So we like our oil at like 325. I just wanna hold it in there for a second until part of it starts to fry, mm -hmm. and then drop the rest in. I don't want it sitting on the bottom and sticking to the bottom. Yeah. And you don't wanna like cook too many at one time because you don't wanna drop the, your oil temp, right? Exactly, right, exactly. So that'll take about three to five minutes for that to cook. Even if you get it really crispy on the outside, you can still be inside there and having it be undercooked. Mm -hmm. So you want the outside to be at its perfect color and the perfect crispiness as it just gets cooked through. You don't want like grandma's chicken that's usually really, really dry. <laughs> you want really, really moist chicken. Sorry, we grind grandmothers it. out there. Nothing against grandmothers, right? <laughs> The closer it gets to being done, the less bubbles you'll see. These guys are done. Ready to go? Yep. Yeah. So we'll just take them out one at a time. And you can see nice golden brown color. Look at them shining. I mean, they're beautiful. We want to hit them with just a little bit of salt. So it's, it's nice and hot. We've got our coleslaw here that we've made. It's made with kohlrabi, which is a really fun vegetable that not a lot of people use, and it's great in slaw. We've got lime juice, cilantro, mint. Yeah. I've never uh, had mint in my slaw before. I want to have some acidity in there, and I want to have some herbs to make it really, really stand out. Then we've got our fried chicken. So you can look at this. I mean, this is just super crunchy. You know, what us chefs do is usually we take this. <laughs> We eat it. You know, you see a lot of times fried chicken served with maple syrup because of chicken and waffles. And yeah. I decided, well, if we can get a really good flavorful crispy chicken and then drizzle truffle honey on it, like and get that sticky, you know, so kind of sweet, sweet, but like, but really kind of, unctuous right? truffle yeah. flavor too. It would be that perfect balance between like breakfast and lunch. You know? Beautiful. And the last thing we have are just a little bit of chives. 
Adds a little bit of that nice fresh onion flavor to it. And that's how we serve it for brunch. Fried chicken for brunch. There you go, exactly. Need a fork for the slaw. Right. I got you one. I don't yeah. know why I got you one. I should just keep it for myself. Yeah. <laughs> no, no fork for the chicken though. Right? Wow. Because mm -hmm. obviously salinity from the chicken, but yeah, then you get the sure. honey, that little bit of sweetness. It's not like overpoweringly sweet, but and then you get that little hint of truffle. It's got that kind of umami-ness like, mm -hmm. flavor to it. And do you see how moist it is for chicken breast? Yeah. People can't believe that this is chicken breast, but that's what the brine does. I want to try it with a little bit of slaw. Uh -huh. And then you eat that, it's kind of creamy, cools it down a little bit. That mint comes through really nicely. Yeah. It just pops, you know? So this is what you want for brunch. You're a savory brunch guy taking it. Think of how many times you've had fried chicken like in your fridge left over from the day before. Yeah. You get up in the morning and you're like, oh, I'll just eat this piece of chicken <laughs> right now. So it's got a perfect place, I think, on the brunch menu. It's outstanding. Go. Give it a good slathering on the lamb here. Yeah, that's it. Okay, we got four bones here. We're looking out for the chine bone on the back. There's one little bone there. And then from there, we're gonna go straight down and then you got a really beautiful lamb. All right, and we'll plate it up right here.